Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my presentation on effects of aerodynamic and lightweight trailers on fuel consumption of heavy goods vehicles. The aerodynamic trailer has a bore tail at the rear end at an angle of about 4.5 degrees. And on the front end, it has a deflector, which as the name suggests, deflects the wind and a fin, which will prevent the wind from crossing over from one side to the other. The lightweight trailer uses lightweight materials for its chassis, sidewalls, lower deck, upper deck, etc. It also uses wide single tire, which should reduce the rolling resistance coefficient compared to the uh, conventional twin tires. We evaluated some of these vehicles in service when they perform normal transport operations. However, as these are not control environment, we took some of these vehicles to a test track to perform cost down tests and then we could estimate the coefficients of rolling resistance and aerodynamic track. We could then use these estimated coefficients in our simulation model so that we could evaluate how these vehicles would perform in different drive cycles. In the in-service evaluation, we collected telematics data from two aerodynamic vehicles and a baseline vehicle for a period of five months. Using the in-service data, we fitted a regression model of this form where F is the fuel consumption, beta 0 to beta 4 are the model parameters, M is the average vehicle mass in a day, V is the average vehicle speed in a day, S is the driver performance measure out of 1000, and T is the trailer drive. What we could find from this analysis was that the aerodynamic trailer has a statistically significant effect on fuel consumption. If we take a look at these plots, here on the y-axis we have fuel consumption. In the first plot, on the x-axis, we have vehicle weight. And as you can see, as the vehicle weight increases, fuel consumption increases. In the second plot, on the x-axis, we have vehicle speed. When it increases, the fuel consumption decreases. This is because what you are seeing on the x-axis is the average vehicle speed, and as it increases, the traffic congestion decreases, which results in lower fuel consumption. In the third plot, on the x-axis, we have driving stack. And as you can see, as the driving style improves, fuel consumption decreases. In the last plot, what you can see is that compared to the baseline, the aerodynamic vehicle has approximately 2.5% power fuel consumption. To estimate the coefficients of rolling resistance and aerodynamic track, we conducted cost down tests on a test track. This track has two segments. One is in the northeast direction, the other is in the southwest direction. Both these segments are connected by banked curves on both ends. Before performing the costume test, we loaded the trailer with concrete blocks to a gross vehicle weight of approximately 43.32 tons. After we loaded the vehicle, we performed the costume test. In a costume test, we accelerate the vehicle to its legal maximum speed of 84 km per hour. Then we put the vehicle into neutral gear and then start costing down until the vehicle comes to a complete standstill. Unfortunately, the test track is not long enough for us to cost down all the way from 84 to zero. Therefore, we did this in segments. What we did was to go to the northeast test track and then have an initial speed of 84, and then start costing. And then uh, once we come to the end of that northeast test track, we go around then we go to the southwest test track and then we do the same test then we note the final speed with that we come to the end of the first lap then we go around and then start again but with the initial speed equal to the final speed from the previous lap then we do this costing experiment on the northeast test track when we are at the end of the northeast test track we come around and then we do the same on the southwest test track and then we reach the end of the second lap then we repeat this process until we come to a complete standstill. This is one complete test and it gives us two set of values, one in the northeast direction and one in the southwest direction. And we did two more such tests for each vehicle. And then we could use this data in order to estimate the coefficients of rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag. We use the acceleration and vehicle speed measurements to estimate the coefficients of aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. However, before we can estimate the coefficients, we first need to compensate for the wind speed. If you take a look at this plot here, where on the x-axis you have vehicle speed and on the y-axis you have the acceleration, 
you can see that uh, both the plots, that is the one for northeast direction and the other for the southwest direction, they don't overlap each other. This is happening because wind speed is corrupting vehicle speed. So the first step is for us to compensate for this wind speed. And once you do that, so if you take a look at the plot on the right, again on the y-axis we have acceleration, whereas on the x-axis, instead of just the vehicle speed, we have the compensated vehicle speed. And then you can see that in the both direction, the plots for northeast and southwest, they do overlap. So now we have a compensated data set, which we can now use to estimate the coefficients. The coefficients were estimated by minimizing the difference between the measured cost down time and the time taken by a model with the candidate coefficient values. This optimization problem was solved for all three tests wherein each test has a southwest data set and a northeast data set. That gave us a total of six different data sets which we could use. In this uh, cost down test, we had used two different vehicles. One was a baseline vehicle, the other was an aerodynamic lightweight vehicle. And for both of these, we could estimate the difference in aerodynamic drag coefficient and a difference in, in the rolling resistance coefficient. And uh, as you can see here, this table has mainly two elements. The first is CDA, that stands for the product of the coefficient of aerodynamic drag and the effective frontal area of the vehicle. And CR here, that stands for the rolling resistance coefficient. Now, if you take a look at the mean values, you can see that the aerodynamic lightweight vehicle has about 7.2% lower aerodynamic drag compared to the baseline. Similarly, if you take a look at the uh, rolling resistance coefficient, you can see that the aerodynamic lightweight vehicle has about 10% lower rolling resistance compared to the baseline vehicle. The estimated coefficients were used in our fuel consumption model. So what we did was to use these coefficients of aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance in different configurations. What I mean by that is we developed four different simulation models, one for a baseline vehicle, one for an aerodynamic vehicle, one for a lightweight vehicle, and then one for the aerodynamic lightweight vehicle. So that gives us four different vehicle configurations. Then we use these four different simulation models to evaluate how these vehicles perform in different dry cycles. With the simulation models, first let's take a look at this analysis, which is between the aerodynamic factor of the dry cycle and the fuel consumption benefit per transport work as a percentage. Here by aerodynamic factor, what I mean is, it is in fact a measure of the energy ratio between the energy required to compensate the aerodynamic drag and the total energy required for a dry cycle. That will be 100 when you are cruising at the maximum speed on a motorway and it will be less than 10 when you are in a city center dry cycle. And what you can see here from this aerodynamic legend is that as the aerodynamic factor increases, the fuel benefit as a percentage also increases with the maximum value close to 5% when you are cruising on a motorway. And if you take a look at now at the lightweight legend, what you can see is that um, the fuel benefit per transport work as a percentage is around 17 to 18%. It increases slightly as you go towards more long haul and motorway cruising. Now, if you take a look at the top plot, which is for the aerodynamic lightweight vehicle, you can see that it gives the most fuel benefit as a percentage. And for a long haul dry cycle, which is this point here, it gives around 20% fuel benefit as a percentage. And, and for the motorway cruising, it, it is uh, even higher with a value close to 22%. Now, this analysis was done with a gross vehicle weight of about 30.5 ton, which was the daily average gross vehicle weight of the fleet operator's vehicle, which we monitored. Now, what happens if the vehicle is fully loaded? So that's what we analyze next. So in this plot, we have the same analysis, but with a gross vehicle weight of 44 ton. And, and what you can see here is that the fuel consumption benefit per transport work as a percentage decreases slightly compared to this analysis here. However, this does not mean that fully loading a vehicle is a bad idea. It just means that the percentage uh, reduction decreases. However, the absolute value of fuel consumption per transport work uh, will be in fact lower when you fully load the vehicle. That is what we analyze next. In the previous slide, we looked at fuel consumption benefit per transport work as a percentage for different dry cycles. Whereas in this slide, we will look at the absolute fuel consumption that is in liter per 100 ton kilometer 
for different draw cycles. This analysis is for a gross vehicle weight of 30.5 ton, which shows the average daily vehicle weight of the fleet operator's vehicle, which we monitor. And as you can see, the uh, baseline vehicle has the most fuel consumption in all dry cycles, whereas the aerodynamic lightweight vehicle has the least fuel consumption in all dry cycles. You can also observe that as the aerodynamic factor increases, the fuel consumption per transport work decreases for all different vehicle configurations. This makes sense because as the aerodynamic factor increases, the intensity of start-stop operations will also decrease. Now, this was for a gross vehicle weight of 30 and a half ton. What happens if we were to fully load the vehicle with the maximum legal weight of 44 tons in the UK? And as you can see, the uh, trends are the same as this analysis. However, what you can see is that in all different cases, the absolute fuel consumption per transport work decreases compared to this case. And you can also see that the aerodynamic lightweight gives the least fuel consumption per transport work in all different dry cycles. Okay, now let me conclude my presentation. In this project, we evaluated the effects of aerodynamic and lightweight semi-trailers on fuel consumption of heavy goods vehicles. We performed these evaluations using two approaches. In the first approach, we evaluated two aerodynamic vehicles using telematics data. And we found that the aerodynamic features indeed have a statistically significant effect on fuel consumption. We also found that they reduce fuel consumption by about 2.5% for long haul transport operations. In the second approach, we use simulation models to understand how these vehicles would perform in different drive cycles. But to do that, first, we perform cost on tests on a test track in the UK, and then using the data, we estimated the coefficients of aerodynamic drag and downward resistance of different vehicle configurations. Once we estimated these coefficients, we developed simulation models of different vehicle configurations, which we could then use to evaluate how these vehicles would perform in different drive cycles. And what we found was that the aerodynamic features can reduce fuel consumption by about 3% for a long haul drive cycle, and that the lightweighting features can reduce fuel consumption by about 17.7% .7 for a long haul drive cycle. And finally, when you have both the aerodynamic and lightweighting features, they can reduce fuel consumption by about 20.2% for a long haul drive cycle. With this, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, I will be more than happy to discuss. Thank you.